everyone. Welcome to the Real Estate Tax Tips channel. My name is Chia Chen, a chartered professional accountant located in Oakville, Ontario, Canada. And I'm on a mission to become the Google map for hardworking Canadians seeking financial freedom. Today's topic is about mortgages. Recently, I've got a lot of prospective clients and clients asking me questions about Smith Maneuver. And I got the opportunity to have Dahlia Basum, founder of Streetwise Mortgages, a well-known author in the industry, coming to my client-only webinar. Yes, every single month I do a client-only webinar, interviewing an expert or presenting on some tax update or tax strategies. And if you are interested, make sure that you become our client. So I got Dahlia come in to talk a little bit about the latest mortgage news. Just yesterday, the government just announced that you do not need to re-qualify and pass your stress test if you are renewing your mortgages, moving the mortgages from one bank to another bank. So that stress test is eliminated. It is helpful and great for investors who are looking to move from one bank to another. It will create motivation for the existing banks to uh, lower their rate, be more competitive. So then Investors can switch from one side to another. But then before we even get to that, uh, there were some changes that happened not too long ago about your HELOC, your HELOC, your home equity line of credit changes. And I was so fortunate that Dahlia was able to share that in depth in our uh, client only webinar. She allows me to share that on my YouTube channel as well, because I think that it would be something that's very useful for the rest of us. But before I get to Dahlia, make sure you give us a thumbs up if you like our video and share the content with your friends and families who may find this video useful. Now with that, let's dive into our client-only webinar. Let's hear directly from Dahlia. This home equity line of credit and the changes about the home equity line of credit. And what I want to do is talk about how advanceable mortgages work. So for those who are using them, it's going to be a refresher. For those who haven't heard of them, it's going to be a new learning and also where to find them because some, some clients don't know about all of the options available there with respect to that product. So let's start with the refresher, okay? And essentially, with an advanceable mortgage, you are getting a mortgage with a secured line of credit attached to it, a HELOC or a home equity line. These are all the same words. And between the mortgage and the line of credit, the maximum at loan amount you can get is 80% of the value of the home. That's number one. So you can take that mortgage and have multiple mortgages and you can have multiple line of credits, but it's essentially mortgages connected to one or more lines of credits and together they're 80% of the value. The other thing too is that the line of credit component cannot exceed 65% of the value. And this 80%, okay, this 80% that we're talking about is essentially called the global limit. So it's a it's kind of a technical term, but it's called the global limit. So that's that's what it, what it is from a high level standpoint. And here are the logistics or the dynamics of this product and why it's very popular. You make a mortgage payment every month. That mortgage payment is split between a principal and interest payment. Let's say you're making a payment of a thousand dollars, and seven hundred is your principal payment, and three hundred is your interest payment. If you did not have an advanceable mortgage product, you would be just making these payments every month. But if you have an advanceable mortgage product with a line of credit attached to it that is actually advanceable because not all line of credits are advanceable, some line of credits are not, so the keyword is advanceable. If you have an advanceable line attached to the mortgage, what's going to happen is with every principal payment that you make, your line of credit limit increases by that principal amount. So you made a $700 this month. Now you look at your HELOC statement and you have an additional $700 of HELOC room to borrow. That's how it used to work. Up until 2023, November 2023, which we're going to talk about shortly because the regulators came uh, on board with a modification that has some impact on how this product works. Okay, so that's a refresh. Now, 
many clients are familiar with the uh, Scotia Bank Step product S T E P. That's an advanceable mortgage product, it's very famous for Scotia Bank. Um, but that product is available with many other institutions. So BMO has one called the BMO Ready Access Line. CIBC has one called the CIBC Home Power Plan. RBC has one called the RBC Home Equity Line. National Banks is called the National Bank All-in-One. And Manulife has a product called Manulife One. Not all banks offer this product on rental properties. So the big, big, the, the, the Scotia Bank, oh, and TD, I'm missing TD here. TD also has it. TD has a TD home equity line. It's also advanceable. I should have added the green label here. I was thinking what, I thought there were like, there was one more and it, here, here it is, it's TD. So National Bank only offers it on owner occupied properties. The big banks, Scotia, BMO, CIBC, RBC, and uh, TD, they offer it on rentals as well. And Manulife also uh, offers it. Here's what happened November 2023. OSFI, which is the regulator of the financial institutions, um, had a concern about the level of debt Canadians are carrying. And they were concerned about this cool feature that this product offers, which is the ability to recycle your money because as I mentioned, you pay down the mortgage principal, it doesn't disappear, it comes back to you on the line of credit. So it's like a circle. So Osfi said, you know what, enough of that. Enough of that, we're concerned about the Canadian debt. I'm sure this is not a surprise to anyone here in Canada, we're a very conservative country. I, 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 I can argue over this decision, but here we are, they wanted to limit this ability to recycle debt. So November 1st, 2023, a new rule kicked in. And for those who have the Scotia product, they would have received a letter similar to this. If you were in an advanceable mortgage product with another institution, you may have received a similar letter. And clients who opened up their advanceable mortgage products before September 20. 2012, I believe, were not impacted, but those who opened it up after were impacted. So here is what this new rule essentially says. I'm not going to read this entire big letter because to be honest with you, I read this 20 times, more than 20 times, and I didn't get it. I didn't understand what they're talking about. I didn't understand exactly what's, what is the implication, but here is what it is in a nutshell. What they are saying is effective November 2023, all principal payments to any mortgage portion that is attached to a line of credit portion, okay, combined above 65% of the value must be used to bring down that. 80% global limit over time to 65. I know this means this is probably <laughs> now doesn't explain it any simpler. So what I want to do is I want to show you in a diagram what this means. Let's say you have a house for a million dollars and you at some point set up an advanceable mortgage product with a bank or a lender at 80% of the value. We said the maximum is 80%, right? Between the mortgage components and the line of credit components. So you have an 80% limit. And that 80% limit is made of multiple mortgages and, a, and one line of credit in this example. You could, you, could, you could have had one mortgage, one line of credit, or multiple mortgages and multiple line of credits, because that's the thing. It's like a pizza. They, you, can, you can slice it. That's why the, our accountants love this, because you can track what portion you use for a down payment, or you can use one portion for one property, another portion for another property. It's very clean. So let's say this is this is the setup. So mortgage component one is about 15% of the total value. 150,000 is 15% of a million dollars. Mortgage component number two is 250, that's 25%. The HELOC is 400,000. So before November, 2023, if you were making a payment on these mortgages, right? Your principal pay down would increase this line of credit up to 
until the line of credit gets to 65%, because the line of credit cannot be more than 65. Under the new rule, here's what happens. Let's say you're making a payment on mortgage component number one, like you're paying your mortgage, right? Old rule, the line increases. New rule, what happens under the new rule? Does anyone know? <laughs> so actually, let me start with mortgage component number two because that comment will apply. Mortgage component number two, if you take the 25% and add it to the 40%, that is 65, right? So that mortgage component that is attached to the line is at 65% already, right? So what they're saying is anything that gets paid down now, because it's already at 65, you're not going to get it back. What it's going to do is it's going to just work over time to reduce the limit available to you from 80 to 60, over 65, over 25 years. Every lender is different. But on this component here, if you add the 15% and the 40%, that's what? 55%, right? We're below the 65% rule that they have. So if you're making payments on this component, that would increase the line. So it's not a rule that limits your ability completely, but it just limits the ability on certain mortgage LOC components, depending on whether they are within that 65% box. That's that's basic, basically what they've done. It used it, what, what they've done. It used to be you pay it, you get it, you pay it, you get it. Now you pay it, but depending on which mortgage component is attached to the line. And what is that limit, global limit is, if it's below 65, you get it. If it's at 65, you wouldn't get it. They're going to take that dollar and they're going to over time reduce the 80% available to you. That's what they're doing. I'm going to take questions towards the end. So if you have a question about this, leave it till the end so we don't disrupt the flow of the conversation. But does this, does this make this product less attractive in a way, but does it still come with many benefits? Absolutely. What are the benefits? Like I said, ability to dissect. If we strategically divide up the mortgage and line of credit components in a way that we stay within this 65 limit box, you can still advance in certain cases, but not on all components. So we can restructure it in a way to give you, to maneuver within these rules. I always believe the rules are created to be broken, okay? that's These are the rules. So create a rule, we'll find a way around the rule in a, in a legal way, okay? Not talking about anything, you know, crazy here. In a legal way, it's just creativity. During the re-advanceable slide, um, that 80% global limit being shrunk down to 65% global limit, if you pay down the yes. wrong HELOC or whatever, can you just elaborate on that? The bank will not request that you pay down, will not force you to pay down the HELOC to 65%. It is part of this whole initiative to take anything that uh, is above the 65% and they have their own method to reducing that limit over time. You're not going to, you're not going to pay anything out of your pocket or they're not going to force you to do anything. Okay. Hey, Dahlia, I have a mortgage up for renewal early 2025 with a HELOC for a rental property. How to get in touch with you to discuss my financial info at streetwisemortgages.com. And um, my, my entire team is trained on the financing roadmap and everything that I shared with you guys today, they're fully trained. So just reach out and we'll connect you with a senior advisor on, on the team menu. Uh, there is one more. So is future lending at 65, not 80? No, future so if you were to go today to get an advanceable mortgage, you will get an 80%. The line of credit maximum setup is 65%. Okay. So the mortgage can be 15%. The line of credit could be 65% maximum. The entire thing is 80%. But my point is you can slice it and dice it any way you want. Okay. But this new rule is going to kick in the day you close on the mortgage. They're going to look, okay, you're paying down the mortgage. Is it fitting in this box? Is it above? Is it below? Can you recycle it? Or do they use it to reduce that 80 to 65 over time? On that, so I just have a follow-up question to that exact example. Because um, yeah, yeah. I can't, I'm trying to wrap it around my head. And the re-advanceable thing is something that we talk about, about with uh, clients. So just to, for me to, 
clarify. So in that example, uh, the $1 million house, 800,000 is the global limit. And then you have uh, 65 in a HELOC and then you have the 15% as a mortgage. No, in that example, we had 400 in the line mm -hmm. and we had one mortgage component for 25%, which was 250. And then another mortgage component for 15%, which is one fifth. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if we pay down the 15%, Oh, if, sorry, go ahead. Yes, if you pay down the one that is 250, which is 25%, right? It's attached to a 400,000 line of credit. So together, they they are a 65% box, right? Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. already at a 65% box. If you pay that mortgage component down, you're not going to get money back. But if you pay the first one, which is 15%, with a 40% is at what, 55%? There is a little bit of room to increase it to 65. As you pay it down, you're gonna get the line to increase until the combined box becomes 65. And then anything paid down in that component above that 65 box, they start to use it to reduce the entire thing behind the scene. So you're no longer getting dollar for dollar, but that's how, how it works. Okay. So for and anybody also, who's... There is, no, there is no easy way to determine, okay, how much do I actually get to really recycle? I think mm -hmm. the way it I haven't figured out an answer to that question yet. <laughs> okay, figured. awesome. But when I do, I will let you guys know. Amazing. So anybody who's trying to do the Smith Maneuver and you're about to dump you know, fifty thousand dollars into a prepayment of a mortgage. Uh, please talk to Dahlia and Dahlia's team first, because then nothing is for certain. You don't get get the dollar for dollar back in the HELOC. No, you don't. Amazing. With a second mortgage and a HELOC structure, as previously shown, are there any banks that would allow both mortgages to be readvanceable to the HELOC? Think about the pair, mortgage line of credit, mortgage line of credit, and there could be another mortgage line of credit. So think about the pair. When you're pairing up a mortgage pay down with a line of credit, look at the size of the box. If it's 65% of the value, original value you got the loan at, you cannot advance that component. If it's less than 65, you can advance up until it reaches 65. So we can structure the mortgage components to be below the 65 so that as you pay the different ones, you're still getting the benefit across the board if we're structuring a new one today. But it's think about it this way. Is it within the 65 given the pair? If, it's, if it is, you can't do anything. You've hit the limit. If it's below, you will get that advance until you hit the limit. But if we were to structure something new, I would think about structuring it more strategically to, to, to give you room on every component. HELOC is 10%, mortgage first is 60%, and mortgage three is 30%. Okay. Um, second mortgage payment totaling principal of 5,000. Does the 5K become available as the HELOC is below 65? So let's, let's go through this exercise. So HELOC is 10 mortgage is 60 and mortgage two is 30. So first component is 60 and 10, that is 70. So that mortgage, as you pay the mortgage one, because you're above the 65 box already, you're not getting anything advanced. You're gonna to continue to get paid down, paid down, paid down, paid down until you go below the 65% box and then it will advance to the line. That's component one. Component two, 30% and 10%. So that's 40%. So we are below the 65% box. So yes, every dollar in component one will get advanced because even if you pay it fully, you pay the 30% fully, you're still, you still have breathing room in that 65% box. Think about it that way. And uh, with that, guys, I would like to uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to be of uh, service to you today. Um, if you have any questions about financing or if you want to develop your financing roadmap, whether you're looking to invest in the U.S. and looking for U.S. financing or scale up a Canadian portfolio or you're into multifamily investing, conventional, CMHC, MLI, 
or even looking for a stepping stone using private money, we are here to support you and help you achieve your goals, myself and my team. Uh, don't take anything for granted and uh, we'd love the privilege to uh, work with you. You can email us at info at streetwisemortgages.com and you can also follow me on Instagram at streetwise underscore investor. That's where you can connect best with me through DMs and where I post, uh, post a lot of content. Thank you very much. Wow. So essentially HELOC is no longer at 80%. It sounds like it's no longer at 80%. I'm very grateful that Dahlia was there to share all this wisdom with us because otherwise I would not have known which line of credit that I need to pay off first so that I can get maximum amounts of money coming out from the mortgage pay down. If you have more questions about your mortgage and your portfolio restructuring, make sure you reach out to Dahlia uh, and her team uh, at Streetwise mortgages.com and the link to the website is in the show notes below um, until next time if you find our video useful make sure you share that with your friends and family give us a thumbs up and if you have questions leave it in the message below